Um, first of all, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is Chris Villa. I am a Bob Town Beer and Grill in uh, two locations now, in Robinson and in Manaka, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> and that explains one thing that's wrong, is my voice. We've only been open for a week, thanks to a couple of nice articles in the post is at the end in the uh, Beaver uh, County Times. Um, and uh, we've just been inundated with business, and it's wonderful, and everybody wants to talk and visit. So I, I apologize in advance about my very scratchy voice. Um, if you can't hear me, or if you would like me to slow down or repeat myself, let me know. I am a very fast talker, and I'm nervous as hell to be up on a stage under a spotlight speaking. <laughs> but since Justin used that word about 12 times in the previous session, I'm not as afraid as I once was. Yeah, the fuck word. <laughs> I say it too. I say it too. <laughs> I just thought it sounded better the other way for the first time. Um, and hello to everybody that's out there in outer space watching this. Um, I think I have somebody in Germany that's actually making fun of me and saying that if I think I'm nervous up here on the stage, I look even bigger on the screen on her computer. Anyways, um... <laughs> I'm going to hide behind the podium and try, try to stay standing and not throw up my lunch. Um, in the meantime, um, one of the main things that I've found out, oh well, wow, so much for that idea. <laughs> there we go, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, one of the first things I want to say is that three years ago I came to PodCamp and they actually asked me to have a mentor lounge session that year. And I really didn't know what I was doing then. Um, I feel a lot more confident now. Um, but the message is still the same. To not be afraid to use social media to build a brand or to, you know, to work a cause, um, to do it for a social reason or for a business reason. Do not be afraid of it. You can always hit the delete button. You, know, you can always undo what you've done. You know, we all make mistakes. Uh, my biggest uh, mistake uh, involved posting the word vagina on Bocktown's account. <laughs> that was on my personal account. Um, but you can always, we can always hit the delete button, you can always start over, and to be human and to make mistakes on it and uh, to share the good times and the bad is what makes it work. It's just a new form of communication. You're not um, reinventing, uh, you're not inventing a new thing, it's just a new way to talk. And look, I could talk to somebody you know, that's sitting down at their house right now, Burgett's Town or somebody. Sorry, I don't even know where he lives. Um, I'm in the wrong town. Anyways, I have a bunch of friends that I know that are watching uh, this up from, you know, home. And you can talk to a lot of people in real time and garner real um, support for your brand or your cause. So don't be afraid. Um, <clears throat> The way I can do this and run my own business, and I think that is the key part. I, mean, I hope a lot of you out here are in business for yourself. Can I see a show of hands? Okay. Isn't it the hardest thing to figure out how you can actually run your business and find time to do this and how this can take over your life? Yes. You know, it is very difficult. So my best advice is to allow other people in and to help you. Uh, if you have a one-man company, it's not going to be easy. You will be hiring somebody outside your company, um, a brand manager, a uh, marketing firm. But if you have internal people, uh, especially younger people take to uh, this technology quite well, they can uh, really help you with your brand uh, if you give them the tools that they need and give them the voice that they should be using. Um, just writing down you know, some key components about when you want them to actually um, tweet for you or Facebook for you, give them some guidelines. Once a day, you should be talking about such and such. You can get a lot of help that way. But when you don't have anybody else to lean on, leaning on something like an aggregator like Hootsuite, there are others out there to help you um, is the best suggestion I have. I uh, preloaded and scheduled some tweets to happen. So right now while I'm talking, there are tweets going out about Bocktown. There's Facebook posts going out about Bocktown in real time. Are in this time, and so I could be at work washing dishes or waiting on the table while the message is going out at the appropriate time of day. So mastering Hootsuite, I think, is one of the biggest things that you can do. I'm not all worried about the analytics and the you know of, of it. I know it's working because people are walking into my restaurant. I can see real time uh, reaction to what I post. They interact, they reply, they follow. 
Um, there are plenty of things here to do the analytics. Um, I don't have time to look at them. This is really what it comes down to. It might, might be good for you to look at your open rates on your emails and you know what time things get looked at, but I don't worry too much about it. If people care about your brand or like what you're saying, they'll follow you. Um, and they'll just they'll, they'll look back, they'll look at the history. <clears throat> so um, I also want to just give a little, um, before I get too further into all this, I want to kind of give one little bit about entrepreneurialism because there are a lot of you that are, if you're not entrepreneurs yet, you may be. I'm only 46, well, only 46. I am 46, but I was 40 years old when I started my business. I never worked for myself before that. Um, I think now I look back and find some sort of entrepreneurialism in myself in like fifth grade. You know, I, I think I can see little hints that I always was meant to be one, but never had the courage to do it. Um, I tell you, what's the worst that can happen? If you are on that edge thinking, I don't know if I want to do it, there's no reason not to give it a try. Just if it doesn't work, you just go get a job. You know, the end of the world is not going to happen to you. So uh, I have give, been given that advice by my husband and by a bunch of other people to just say, jump, just go for it. Not the only thing holding you back is yourself. Uh, and I'm very happy to have two very successful locations. I do want to go more. And the first business getting that one open was an emotional roller coaster for myself. But now I feel like I could do anything. I and mean, it's just a great feeling once you've created one. So if you are on the verge of becoming an entrepreneur, if you're thinking about it, these you've got all the most wonderful tools in the world right now to help you build your company. Um, I, it, I could talk to thousands and thousands of people through Facebook, and only 82 people could fit in my restaurant. So what are the odds? We could pretty much always fill the restaurant. And way more than 82 people usually are trying to get in. Um, so I'll get back to my notes. Um, <clears throat> you're creating soldiers for your brand with uh, Facebook and Twitter. And you want to interact with them. It's very important to reply. The, to the good and the bad. Um, there are negative comments every once in a while. You'll get called out. For, in my case, I get called out for the price of beer or if somebody was unattentive to service. I always reply. I try to do it publicly so that everybody else can either chime in and help me or see that I'm willing to be wrong um, or make a mistake. Um, it, it is the best thing you could do. If you just, just constantly barrage everybody with advertising and information and never reply back if it's a one-way street, that will not work for you. You know, it is a conversation and communication both ways is the most important part of it. So remember that. <clears throat> when there's a really difficult situation, if there's something's really rude, you can literally delete the posts off your page. If somebody's saying something that's just completely harassing, you can delete it, you can block them. Don't be afraid to do that. I don't have to do it once. Um, I usually just address the issue. Nobody else is, but thousands of people are not going to see the complaints. You see the complaints. Most people have their opinion formed about you ahead of time, um, and we're not going to change that. But uh, I had one gentleman who said that we don't like children, that we ignored him, that we were obviously ignoring them on purpose. Well, why in the world would we do that? It doesn't make any sense. So, oh, we're not going to wait on that table. They have a baby at it. But rather than give him a bunch of grief about it, I sent him a direct message, or excuse me, a private message, and told him I was sorry that this, you know, the staff was understaffed, and nobody noticed it was their table. Could I buy him dinner another time? And you know, he had posted very publicly, I'll never be back, and everybody I know who has kids will never come there again. But, you know, why didn't you get up and come ask us and say, excuse me, nobody's been to our table? But since he posted it, I just offered to buy him lunch, you know, for the next time. He won't come back. But things like that, you do need to learn about. I learned that I didn't have enough staff on that day, or the staff wasn't strong, uh, or the table slipped through the cracks because they were changing, um, you know, changing over from day to evening, and nobody noticed it was their table. So I had learned, from, learned something from that and improved my company uh, by getting the negative criticism. Um, I also uh, highly believe in the Google Alerts um, to, you know, you can, I only use it for a couple things, but I have it set up so that anytime anybody says walk town out on the internet, I usually get an email saying, hey, your name's been mentioned. And it could be in an article, it could be in a blog post, it could be a Twitter, it, excuse me, a tweet. Um, and, and you just get all kinds of great information. You find out if somebody might have blogged about your uh, the dining experience maybe before that anybody's going to see it. You get a little peek at it. You can even tag it back to your website. So it's a great little tool to have um, uh, to at your disposal. I seem to be, um, I have it filtered out now that I'm really getting real stuff. I don't need every last tweet in an email. Um, <clears throat> I actually set my up to come to me weekly now instead of daily. 
Um, the other thing to keep in mind is you can do this all, every bit of it, from the phone. You don't even need a computer. Get a phone, 4G, or you know, a really nice phone. Uh, I have a tap computer that would cost me $100, $150, so Samsung Galaxy Tab, and it is a hotspot. I don't use the hotspot feature. It's $30 a month for like whatever, two whatevers. I don't know the technology. But with that stupid thing and this stupid thing, do whatever, right? But anyways, there's these two things I can literally talk to the world. So invest in those tools. They're not that expensive. You, um, you, that way you can just drop whatever. You know, if there's something really exciting happening, get a picture, get it up there and share it without having to go find a laptop, without downloading and uploading a picture. You can upload Facebook posts straight from your phone with a picture. Um, it, it spend some time taking all the tutorials on Facebook and Twitter and Hootsuite and learn about the pieces and parts that make it work for you. Um, it's not difficult because if I can do it, and we keep a computer on the screen here, if I can do it, you guys can do it. Um, using hashtags. I abuse hashtags. I write the silliest stuff. I, like today I said puking Nathan's um, because I just ate there and I was nervous about getting up here. I think of them as bumbles. They're sort of asides. They're things you don't want to be tracked for. Um, if you wanted to say a swear word, if you wanted to say something that might like, have a religious word in it, and you don't want to be getting pulled with a bunch of uh, followers that are just spam bots, you kind of hide what you want to say in there. So those words don't trigger a bunch of spam. But you can also use them the correct way. That's, for example, everybody should be hashtagging um, podcast. Uh, what is it, PC, PGH6 today when you're tweeting so that the tweets come up on the Twitter falls, if there are any Twitter falls here today, but people in real time can see what everybody else is seeing around the room and around the buildings. <clears throat> um, they're very important. Um, a lot of people don't know what they are yet, I think, and I use craft beer continuously. I search that term every day, all day. If I need something to say, if I need to wait to bond with the customer, I don't have anything about my restaurant to say, I'll find an industry article about beer or a statistic about beer or even food and localism. Um, I'll, try, I'll try these different tags, follow those, and get good information, and then retweet and share uh, information that might be educational to my, my followers. I'm not just trying to tell them what the soup of the day is or what's on draft. Um, if you don't know about hashtags, we get down here a little bit. We can look at them once I can play with the computer a little bit. Um, actually, I know that I had a search on here just for today. I, I actually added the search on for. Um, pod care. Oh, so I'm going to let me show it. So, oh, good. Somebody's talking about me up there. There we go. Thank you, Sandwich. Anyways, just in general, um, the, the hashtags are a really fun tool to use. You can use them for business or for fun. Um, embrace them. They look, they look goofy, but they're a lot of, lot of use, a lot of use to me. <coughs> I already talked about my next point I have here. I said allow others to post for you and create administrators. On Facebook, I have about 12 people that can actually help me. About three of us are pretty active, and we've figured out how to have the same voice. I don't know how it happened, but we, you, know, you can tell that we, some people are keen in on us well enough to know who's saying it, but basically, we've got a pretty consistent voice on there. So just kind of working on the little sort of brainstorming session. Maybe you have one person in your company that just talks about food items. One person just talks about beer items. Another person that handles the news points. Just uh, divide and conquer. And talk about which days. You all need a day off. You should turn the start the stinking computer off once in a while and look around. Today's a terrible day to be inside. We should all be outside just enjoying the fresh air and beauty of this fall day, but we're all connected to technology. Um, so do make time to shut off. Uh, it's very hard for me to find it right now, but I know how important it is. Um, Creating a company policy about social media uh, is important, even if it's just two or three of you. You want to lay down some guidelines so that when you do have them tweeting for you um, or, or Facebooking for you and they really just aren't doing a good job anymore, you hand them the policy and say you're no longer on here and take them off, you know, get them off your administration. But give them a policy up front so that they know sort of what guidelines to follow. They have to know the rules. <clears throat> then they can break the rules. I mean, we want them to know what they can do and you know, how far they can push it. But uh, you also want to let them be human and break the rules just a touch. You just have to be careful that they're not, I would say, 
they're not speaking completely online or getting vulgar. Um, I had one girl who worked for me who actually posted on her own page very negative things about us and about her boss that's always running her business from Facebook. And I confronted her about it. I said, why would you go to Facebook first? Why wouldn't you come to me and tell me you had a problem with me or what's the underlying problem? She goes, oh, that wasn't about you. That wasn't about you. I'm like, then why did you block me from my page? We have 50 some common friends. They told me about it. I'm like, if it wasn't about me, why did you block it? <laughs> she couldn't answer me, and she did lose her job. Um, she just was shaking like a leaf. But why are you on Facebook saying spouting something that you haven't tried to handle in person. It is no place to just take your business. I think teaching your staff that also, even if it's in a personal life, whatever it is, co-workers fighting amongst each other on Facebook, it's just not appropriate. So training them to deal with life in real life before they bother to go there, that's not the first uh, whatever, the first uh, line of action for communication by any means. <clears throat> so I explain to people why I use it and how I use it when we have meetings with staff, and it, usually they get it. <clears throat> Creating dynamic content, I kind of touched on this already, but um, we like to post questions and run polls and have contests and do actually respond in line with the contest. If you don't create a conversation, if you just post and nobody replies, it's not really getting anywhere. You want to see them replying because then their friends see you. They're involved with this. They're talking to you. They might follow you. It's just like a great big tangled mess of people that start noticing what you're talking about. And every time they're out there saying "bok tam, bok tam, bok tam," I'm thrilled. Um, so you have to you have to engage them to um, have you know ask a question. What's your favorite beer? What I think we asked today. What's your favorite fall beer? Um, and I should be getting some replies actually now. I have it on Facebook. Um, and as the, I think I'm going to run it the whole day, so if you, say, if you tweet or Facebook your favorite fall craft beer, they'll be in it to win, I think it's a t-shirt, but I'm not sure. Um, and following up on that too, it's very important, it's hard to remember, you start too many contests, you can't finish, figure out how to finish them, but tomorrow we'll announce a winner. So, okay, and then um, I also really enjoy using Foursquare and uh, Beer Buy, beer, Beer by, I say beer by, um, and other types of location based services like um, Guala. Um, and a lot of people think they're creepy. I think they're wonderful. They're great right for business because every time somebody checks into your business, again, it's saying, Bob, tell me you're a girl all over the internet. And everybody's like, What is that? What is that? What is that? And so we're, we're doing very well with that type of publicity. It's not advertising, it's publicity. Um, if everybody's saying they're there and they're having a grand old time, then more people want to come there. So, it's, yeah. we, um, the Beer Buy is basically an application for your phone that sends out, um, if you wanted to track your beers, like a little diary, you can send it to post to Facebook or Twitter. And it says, I just tried East End Monkey Boy at Blocktown Beer Girl. So, they get, a, they get a log of what they're drinking. They eventually get badges if they complete certain circuits of drinks. At Bok Town, we have what we call 16 ways to love your liver. So after you've had 16 drafts of Bok Town, you get a, a silly badge. But it's a game for people. But what does it do for us? It just gets our name in the public eye. And you know, it's very, very, very useful. Um, any kind of location-based publicity is great for uh, an actual physical store. The next one I have is uh, Twitter falls and other public tricks. <laughs> we went to do a thing called the Steel City Big Pour uh, last weekend. Um, I call myself the unofficial social media um, sponsor of the Big Pour. We put up a projection screen and we just run uh, a search on Twitter fall, actually, not on Hootsuite. And it just starts falling on the page. Everybody is talking about the day's events uh, with the right hashtag. I'm sure that you guys have one here, you've all seen one. Um, but it's behind our booth in front of thousands of people that day. So they all stop and stare. Because everybody looks at the screen, everybody looks at the television, no matter what it says. So they're, they're all looking at it and going, what the heck is that? So I found people that I, I that never were on Twitter and engaged them and got them into Twitter. And now we're one of their first followed people, Bought Down or Uncapped, which is my own personal one. And it's amazing the way that you can garner attention with something like that. 
Um, I definitely highly recommend using Twitter falls or at least set, setting up your own hashtag for specific events so you get a lot of people talking about you on a particular day. Um, there's uh, one other one that's uh, pretty cool, something that happened to us uh, recently. We're only one of four restaurants, I think, in Pennsylvania that are using it. There's an application called Tabbed Out on uh, my, tel my telephone right now that you can go into lockdown and use your phone to pay. You would put your um, credit card information into your account. It's like you never hand your credit card to the server. You start your tab, you tell them about it. They, they, it's a pre-authorized credit card, so it is. And they don't take your card, but you can walk out and pay on your phone. They don't have to say goodbye. Um, you can tip on the phone. We have to tip, but won't let you go with a zero tip. Um, and then uh, people are asking me about this. Why would I do it? What good is it? It's only about 1% of my sales. Right now, uh, I think it is 1%, and it's just a fun toy. Again, the way I've used it, hopefully, is to garner a little attention for the restaurant. Jim Loke wrote a story about us on KDK already, because it's new technology. Um, we also were interviewed just the other day for Launch Floor Magazine as being one of the first 200 restaurants in the country to do it, and uh, to talk about how it works and why we think it'll grow. So it's uh, almost, you could tag on to somebody else's, you know, ride somebody else's wave and get involved in the story. Again, you're creating, you know, you're building your brand, um, and this is social. It's social media because when you use something like Tapped Out, there's also a button to say, I just paid with Tapped Out and walked down there and go. So again, people are talking about that um, in real time. So it creates a conversation. And then if you want to try it out right now, there's only four places to come do it in all this, uh, this state. It's very prevalent in Ohio. Um, and it does attach to our uh, POS system. So it depends on what relationships Tapped Out is making in the marketplaces to help prevalent those become. But everybody knows that mobile payments are really hot and it's it's coming along. There's a few different methods how they work, but to know more about it is just gonna help you get out of retail location, learn about it, check into it, get involved early. It doesn't cost us a darn dime. It does cost in the sense that it's a higher transaction fee on a credit card, but it's just it's minuscule. Um, <clears throat> My last one is uh, QR codes uh, and mobile integration of your um, your own business. I have a little QR code thing to hand everybody that will take you to my podcast notes that I have on the, on the internet that I'm reading from. Um, I do two, I've only done two of these so far. One of them is on our growlers that we sell. So if you're not familiar with QR codes, you can make them for free yourself on the internet. Um, mine actually have a logo on it that a friend of mine put together for me. Um, what they do is just pop you to someplace on the internet for more information. Um, and where they take you to, in my case, is straight to Blocktown's tap list on the internet. So if you have the growler in your hand, you're sitting at home, boy, I want to get my growler filled up today, I wonder what's on tap. Snap a picture of that uh, with your QR code reader, and we've got two tap lists, one for each location. And you can go uh, say, well, I'm going to make a run up to that one. They've got to get some East End Monkey Boy. I'll keep plugging Scott today. Um, <clears throat> or whatever beer you need, but a lot, <laughs> excuse me. Um, they have been a lot of fun. It's just, it's a new toy. Are they going to be effective? Are they going to be around a long time? I'm not sure. It's free. Give it a shot. If it doesn't work for you, oh well. You don't have to put a lot of effort into it. Um, and it gets information to the people that are looking for it. I have uh, used them one other time for a contest. I, I wasn't too happy with how that one worked because it, it was sort of time sensitive. And the comp you want to try to put a QR code to something out that is dynamic, you know, so, something that you can continue to change. I could change this podcast notes to be my next year's podcast notes if I felt like it. <clears throat> anyway, um, I am just babbling. I felt I had a whole bunch of stuff I wanted to show you guys online here, but I'm not comfortable with how I have this set up. Um, I do want to look for my searches here for a second. And then I'll just type some questions. Just snapping pictures. Thank you for letting me get behind the podium before you did it. <laughs> well, whatever. Are we all looking for people? <laughs> we need staff. We need staff. It's wonderful, wonderful problem to have. It's growing too fast. I went from 35 employees to about 90 in one week. And it's hard because they don't even know who I am yet, and I barely know them. 
it's kind of um, it's sad on my part because I've interviewed every single person that worked for me in my first restaurant, and I don't even know some of the names of the people running around. They don't even know I own it at this point. It's probably better than they can <laughs> they can make mistakes in front of me, and I can help them, not fire them. Anyway, let's switch over to. Oh, this is distracting me, so let's just switch over to some questions, and um, if I went too fast or if I bored you to tears, I will not be upset if you got up and left. Anybody? Anybody over here? For your business specifically, what's the single most, like the thing you did, one thing that you did that gave the best feedback socially? Good, good question. He asked me what was the one thing that I did socially that gave me the best feedback. Um, I think there were probably more than one decent ones, but Tara, who's my general manager, actually had a great one. She did a Facebook post that um, asked the question um, to name our beers for the new restaurant, which, for, which, which 16 beers you'd like on there. She got 37 some replies, and just people, some people put the whole entire tap list there. Some people just put one beer. But the interaction, just post after post after post, was amazing. And it was on a Saturday afternoon, which is not a day that I think that I'm sitting around looking at Facebook. Um, and then she did one other one that she did an alphabetized list of craft beer. And we went through the alphabet once. She's like, okay, come on, we've got the eye. She came down at the end. She goes, okay, we got to Z. Let's start over again. So she ended up with that one. We went through the alphabet, I think, three times before it was over. And you really don't have to monitor it. They help you. And if you put alphabetical lists, somebody has to pick the next letter and go for it. And she came back and checked it a couple times. And it's just an amazing amount of response and interaction. Um, the Twitter call would probably be my other biggest one, uh, ha having 3,000 people looking at walked down up on a screen for three hours out of drinking. It was pretty helpful getting followers, you know. Another question? I saw somebody there. Okay. How would your business be without your savvy skills? <laughs> My savvy skills? I don't know that I'm so skilled. Well, I mean, without the use of what you are, you have to be confident savvy, which you do. Without that social media, which you have the business that you have today. Good question. Scott just asked me, hey, without social media, do I think I have the business I have today? I don't. I uh, really don't think so. And it's not necessarily my savvy skills. It's basically my understanding I better embrace this or get left behind. So um, there are a lot of restaurants that aren't doing anything but standing there twiddling their thumbs waiting for customers to come in and go, wow, blow is me. I can't afford to advertise. I can't afford to do anything. Yeah. It, I mean, somebody somewhere figured out Chris, your business should open in 2006, and there should be a thing called Twitter. There should be, there shall be a thing called Facebook. And there shall be a thing called Instagram to help you grow it. So, the believe in the beer gods, I guess. Um, it definitely has uh, the tools that have come right along the right time and place for me to grow my business. I wouldn't have been happy having to put a little ad in the corner of a little local newspaper every week and say two for one dinner specials. You know, I don't. I absolutely hate Groupon and. Those types of services, I'm sorry if somebody works for them that's in the room, but I, I think that this discounted services are a bad way to promote your brand, and that has come along too. Um, very, very popular now, um, and get your name out in front of a lot of people. Again, seemingly free, but it is not um, not free at all. It's like asking somebody to walk in the front door and take at least 7% of your gross sales off the top and walk out. <laughs> So sorry, that's my that's my anti group on comment for the day. I do have a blog that I have not been blogging on. I need to get to the next session and actually learn how to blog more. Um, but it is uh, uncapped, U N C A D D, WordPress. At, excuse me, period. WordPress.com, and I talk a lot about social media and restaurant life and craft beer there. And I've been meaning to post something about. Um, uh, just a living social group on kind of thing deals where if you're going to spend eight thousand dollars, you might as well figure out what you're spending it on. Um, you know it, that is an advertising campaign. So sorry about the soapbox there, but um, I will probably post about that soon. Another question? I I'm just curious, what uh, was your background before you started? Um, good question. Um, where it came from? <laughs> she asked me what was my background before I started Bogtown. I uh, went to college at Pitt, English writing, which definitely has helped me with social as well. And uh, graduated, became a copywriter for a design firm, so I learned a little more about design and marketing. Hated it, absolutely hated my job, because I was writing things like uh, how to 
I don't know, like manuals, how to fix this, how to make that thing somebody else is writing. It wasn't mine, so I had to get out of it. I was homesick, I was out of town, and I came home and picked up bartending by accident. My boyfriend couldn't make it to a shift, and they asked me to come in. I came in, I loved it, they fired him within two weeks, and I've been, I've been gabbing at people ever since. <laughs> it was okay, it was okay, he, he, needed, the, he needed the break. Um, but basically the interaction and socialization that uh, restaurant work brought was pretty addicting. I just like everybody, I mean, I like people, and I, I felt comfortable behind the bar, and I actually worked at most bars, most bars I've worked at were fine dining or nice service bars where you eat. I've never worked at a place where you just get people drunk. I'm absolutely against that. But most of my career has been in the restaurant industry, and I ended up with Bucktown when I turned 40, and I always tell this story. I left it out. My husband and I were coming home for my 40th birthday, and he said, uh, how do you feel about being 40? I said, I hate it. I feel like I'm going to be 50, 60, 70, and dead and never have done what I wanted to do. And he said, well, what's stopping you? And my main opinion of it was just I was afraid of failure. I said I was afraid of putting him in debt. Uh, a bunch of other little questions and answers like that. I don't know how to do the insurance thing, the tax thing, run a business. Never went to school for business. I can't add two plus two. I, I am actually decent with money, but I was uncomfortable with cash flow and spreadsheets and everything else. So he said, well, I'm not holding you back. If you want to do it, don't, tell, don't come back to me when you're 70 and say you didn't do it. You know. Just go for it. What's the worst that can happen? So that's what I said a little earlier. Anyways, I basically started taking books out of the library like crazy. It was just a light bulb off in my head. I learned as much as I could. I started studying things like um, looking at cash flow and reading words like key metrics and trying to figure out what they all meant. Just flipping through, flipping through books, looking for the information I didn't know. And then I went to seminars, some, some like this, um, entrepreneur seminars, uh, things that happened down on... Um, there's a little hub in Alcapa, it was called the Alcapa Alliance for Community Development. I went there and um, took a couple classes there and those were very giving people and they gave me the courage to start.